Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Stefan Christian Ionescu, and today I'm going to talk about the Armenian uh, genocide, the Armenian question during Second World War Romania. Before I start, I would like to thank the organizers for putting together such a great group of scholars and educators. I enjoyed a lot of the participation here and hope to stay in touch. During the last decade, a growing number of scholars have paid attention to the connections between the Holocaust and the Armenian genocide. Just mention a few names such as uh, Kurt Umit, uh, Stefan Erig, and um, Wolf Grüner. And I hope to continue on the footsteps. My paper will scrutinize the ways in which the regime of General Ion Antonescu, who ruled Romania as a dictator between 1940 and 1944, conceptualized the Armenian question and its discrimin discriminatory measures targeting this minority, focusing on the process of economic Romanianization, Romanizare Economica. What was this Romanianization? One of the main domestic projects of Antonescu, Romanianization was an ethno-nationalist policy aiming to exclude Jews and foreigners from local economy and society through confiscation of property and exclusion from employment and businesses. I will also explore in this paper what inhabitants of Romania knew about the Armenian genocide and how did they connect it with the Holocaust. Overall, Antonescu's Armenian policy was rather inconsistent and ambiguous. The Antonescu regime persecuted Armenians, especially the refugees from the Ottoman Empire, through employment and business restrictions, even though to a lesser extent than the Jews and the Roma, who were the main targets of his radical policies. While he considered pursuing a more consistent anti-Armenian policy in 1941, 1942, in the end, Antonescu did not adopt the most radical measures against Armenians because he got entangled with other more urgent issues such as anti-Soviet war, the Jewish question, disputes with the neighboring countries. Armenians were not the main target and victims of the genocidal project. Also because as a small Christian minority, mostly assimilated, they were viewed as less threatening than local Jews and Roma. But as I said, they were the main domestic enemies of according to Antonescu worldview. The Armenian community of World War II Romania was made up of two main groups. First, what I will call native Armenians, I mean old settlers who settled on the territories north of Danube starting with the 14th century, and whose number is controversial due to assimilation of many of them into Romanian or Hungarian communities. And the second group was made of Ottoman refugee Armenians. The refugees arrived in Romania after the massacres perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire in 1894-95, but especially during and after World War I. These newcomers, whose number was estimated around 20,000 people, they settled mainly in Bucharest, the capital, and the, black sea, the main black sea port, Constanza. We heard yesterday about Odessa, was also a focus on Armenian refugees. Um, from a legal point of view, while the old settler Armenians were citizens, the Ottoman refugees were stateless, possessing only the so-called Nansen passports, and they lived in a limbo until the collapse of the Antonescu regime in August 1944. Concerning their rights, the life of many Armenian refugees worsened in the 1930s, when the Romanian authorities promoted ethno-nationalism that increasingly targeted those who did not have Romanian citizenship or ethnicity. During the Second World War, the official policy concerning minorities radicalized even further. The government planned to deport all the Jews and expel most ethnic minorities, except Germans and Italians. But the military failures of the Axis prevented such outcome. The Antonescu regime, however, subjected all minorities, of course, except Germans and Italians, to various degrees of economic persecution, part of his policy of Romanization. For example, foreign citizens some foreign citizens, and all stateless residents, including the Armenian survivors. They suffer from employment and business restrictions. Some local ethnic minorities and the stateless refugees were in a very vulnerable position during this time. And the Antonescu regime was aware of this. Because of the detrimental evolution of war for the Axis, from fall 1942 on, Antonescu grew more cautious about antagonizing the Allies through radical policies targeting minorities and the anti-Semitic legal provisions were never extended to all minorities, including Armenians, as he was initially planned. Unlike stateless refugees, most of the Romanian citizen Armenians were assimilated, 
and could fully participate in Romania's economic, social, military, and political life. For example, Armenians could serve in the Romanian army, and this fact illustrated their superior status compared with the Jewish countrymen and the quasi-equality in rights with ethnic Romanians. Finally, the religious affiliation of Armenians, the Christians, mostly Gregorian or Catholics, this was another reason that worked in their favor and differentiated them from the Jews. As Christians, the Armenians enjoyed good relations with the majority of ethnic Romanians, who were also Christians, though Orthodox and Greek Catholics. Antonescu resented the Armenian businessmen in particular. He viewed them as the parasitic exploiters of local inhabitants, resembling his stereotypes about the Jews. In particular, the profits made by Armenian entrepreneurs in the chaos caused by the Romanization of the economy became a major concern for the Romanian dictator. Armenian refugees were not the only, the only or the main profiteers of Romania's economy in the context of this anti-Semitic Romanization process. In reality, even though some Armenians did profit from Romanization, ethnic Romanians and Germans were the main beneficiaries of the dispossession of the Jews. As a highly urbanized and economically dynamic population with a significant diaspora, Armenians were indeed overrepresented in industry and commerce during that era. According to official data, Armenian businessmen, um, they own about 1% of Romanian capital in industry and commerce, while the share of the population was 0 0.1, 0 0.2. The intention of some Armenians, especially many Nansen passport holders, to emigrate to Soviet Armenia was misinterpreted by the Antonescu regime as the ultimate proof of their disloyalty to the Romanian state and their loyalty to the Soviet Union, against whom, at that time, the Romanian dictator fought an anti-Bolshevik crusade. Romanian officials did not understand the desire of some Armenian, Armenians to escape their fragile refugee status and live in their own republic even if this meant to relocate to a dictatorship, like the Soviet Union, whose domestic policies might have worried some of the potential emigres, but nevertheless, a state that promised equality to all its citizens. For Antonescu's officials, it was important that, just like some Jews, especially those from northern Bukovina and Bessarabia in 1940, some Armenians wanted to live under the rule of its most threatening enemy, the Soviet Union. Armenians did not emigrate to Soviet Armenia during the Antonescu regime. Nevertheless, they ended up on Antonescu's list of suspect groups and were placed under close police surveillance. Just like in other European countries, the Armenian genocide was well known among the Romanian Jews from eyewitnesses, press, and literature. For instance, Karl Hish, a Jewish inhabitant of Chernovitz, remembered in his memoirs that in 1941, while he awaited for deportation in Transnistria by Romanian authorities, he and his young friends assumed that they would suffer the fate of the Armenians, deported by the Ottomans during World War I, which they knew from the novel of Franz Werfel, The Forty Days of Musa Dag. And in conclusion, I understand I'm getting close to... Um, yes, thank you. Um, the Antonescu regime collapsed in August 1944 and never implemented most radical anti-Armenian ideas. Unlike the Jews and Roma, Armenians were not deported to Transnistria, nor subjected to camp deportation camp imprisonment and mass murder. Nevertheless, the authorities constantly debated the Armenian question. They kept them under surveillance and adopted administrative restrictions to keep them out of the economy. While Antonescu considered most native Armenians as kind of integrated into the Romanian com national community and thus not a threat, he viewed the Armenian stateless refugees as a menace to Romania, part of a broader ethno-nationalist policy aiming to purify the nation by excluding minorities the main justification for the persecution of Armenians was their alleged disloyalty to the state, proven by the intention of some Armenians to emigrate to Soviet Armenia, and by their overrepresentation in commerce and industry, and allegedly among the profiteers of Romanianization. Thank you.